and I won't get too far into the weeds with this, but uh, <laughs> equations are fun. Uh, I'm an engineer by degree, and, and uh, uh, I like digging into these things. So I'll show a few equations here. The saving equation is uh, the T60, which would be the reverb time. Sometimes it's written as T60 or RT60, is equal to 0 0.049 multiplied by the volume divided by the total area of absorption in the room, okay? And that 0 0.049 is just a constant that he came up with in, in figuring out all of this and doing his, his uh, uh, um, method in, in determining this equation. That's just the constant that in the equation. And then we have uh, volume, which is something you can figure out mm -hmm. in, in a room. And then the total area of absorption is actually every surface in the room multiplied by its absorption coefficient, mm -hmm. the total surface area multiplied by its absorption coefficient, add all those together, and that becomes the uh, surface area of, of, of absorption. And it's a pretty simple equation, really. It's yeah. like just got a few things um, that, that you have to figure out, and you could figure out the reverb time from that. Sure. Um, the one thing, it does assume a diffuse sound field and that sound hits surfaces one after another as it travels around the room, which is not exactly how it, it happens in real life. Sure. You know, it's like there's a, there's other things uh, that, that that come into play. Um, but it's most accurate with rooms with uh, low absorption. So things that are like really highly reflective, like rooms that you walk in and there's a two, three second reverb time. The saving mm -hmm. equation is really accurate with that. Cool. And it's it's amazing too, like when we're uh, simulating rooms with the saving equation and then we go out and do measurements mm -hmm. of it, it lines up most of the time. If it if it's a, a, a room that the saving equation works well in, mm -hmm. uh, then that it's pretty spot on. It's, it's yeah. pretty, pretty amazing how it still works. Um, one thing to, to note here is too, is that since the absorption coefficients are frequency dependent, because everything absorbs a little bit differently mm -hmm. depending on the frequency, uh, the equation is also frequency dependent where you have to figure out, um, uh, use this equation at each frequency. So you might have an RT60 at 500 hertz using all the absorption coefficients of that material at 500 hertz, but then you gotta do it again for 1,000 and again for 2,000. Right. Luckily, there's a lot of great calculators and simulation programs that you can use to do this really quickly, mm -hmm. um, but it, you could also just figure it out by using this equation uh, every single time. So were the absorption coefficients, was that around when Sabine was first coming up with this or did that come later on? Well, that was him him developing that at the that, same yeah. time. That's what happened at Riverbank, you know, like where they would um, use that reverb time chamber. They put 72 square feet of absorption inside the room, mm -hmm. measure it with and without that material in the space and figure out these absorption coefficients. So he was doing all that stuff yeah. in real time, you know, wow. like it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, and it, so with that, we want to do this when it's it's mostly reflective surfaces, so that the average absorption coefficients uh, are less than 0.2. Uh, typically, is what you want to use this equation for. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, for the most part, it's still accurate today, which is awesome. Yeah. Now there has been some, uh, you know. Uh, advances in, in science and, and different people kind of taking a, a look at this equation and seeing if there's ways that they can improve it. Sure. Uh, one of the things that uh, um, came out of this is the Norris Eyring equation. And we don't honestly don't use this equation all that often because mm -hmm. it is for rooms that are heavily absorptive. Sure. Okay. And most of the time when someone calls us, it's because <laughs> there's a reverb problem uh, rather than there, it, the room being too dead. Although we're working on one right now where uh, the room is just too dead for the application because mm -hmm. it's good for speech, but they want to have a, a choir and an organ in the space. And yep. so they want us to liven it up. So we will use the Irene equation most likely for that one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, most of the time we don't use this just because by nature people call us when echo is an issue. Right. Um, but it is just a, a uh, derived from the Sabine equation. And the difference with this one is, is that um, uh, you, you do have to use absorption coefficients that are less than one. You'll notice on the bottom of this, this equation here, which is T60 equals 0 0.049V. We, we recognize that from the saving mm -hmm. equation. Um, uh, and you divide that whole thing by the total surface area in square feet. That's the ST value. Um, and then you take the natural log of one minus the absorption coefficients. Uh, and that absorption coefficient there is the total area of absorption divided by the total square footage of the wall surfaces and, and ceiling surfaces and floor. Um, 
And the reason we have to use a absorption coefficient below one is because you can't take a natural log of a negative number. And so if you put in a, a, a number there where it was greater than one, then you would end up uh, breaking the equation and it wouldn't work anymore. So, sure. um, but the, the difference with this one is it assumes all those surfaces are impacted simultaneously uh, rather than one after another. Sure. Um, and also each reflection being diminished by the average absorption coefficient. And uh, I will say that this one, it, it, like I said, we don't use it as much as we, we do other equations, and uh, so we don't have as much experience using it. But when it when it warrants itself, it is still very accurate, yeah. and and something that that is helpful uh, in those those uh, extreme cases. Sure. All right, this next one it gets a little more complicated, but honestly, it's it's a. Uh, um, it's derived from the Irene equation, except it's uh, called Fitzroy equation. Yep. And what this one does is actually puts emphasis on the dis distribution of the absorption surfaces, okay? One of the faults of the Sabine equation is that um, it doesn't matter which surface you put the absorption in uh, or on, uh, you're gonna get the same value back. Sure. So that would assume that uh, if you put 100% of one wall covered with absorption treatment, that that room would sound the same as if you divided that up evenly on all four surfaces of the walls. And that's just not the case. Like the room is gonna sound different. Um, so the Fitzroy uh, equation will, um, um, you know, it puts emphasis on that distribution of the absorption. So if you uh, do a simulation with using the Fitzroy equation and you uh, don't divide your absorption out evenly, you're going to get a different number if you, than if you do. Sure. And so it's actually very similar to the uh, um, Irene equation. You know, you see that uh, you've got the same, pretty much the same equation multiple times. And you'll, you'll notice you'll have the SX, S, SY, and SZ uh, portion of this equation. That's the north-south walls, east-west walls, and floor and ceiling, uh, the X, Y, and Z dimensions. And uh, essentially the SX is going to be the total surface area of various planes in the room, divided by ST, which is the total surface area, square feet of all the surfaces in the room. And then you multiply it out like, like you did before, except uh, Fitzroy equation where it's really, really helpful is if you're dealing with a room where the absorption is not evenly distributed uh, around the room. Like let's say there's more absorption on the ceiling or the floor of the room. Uh, a good example is let's say you have a drop tile ceiling, which is fairly absorptive, mm -hmm. and then carpeted floor, but then concrete block on all the walls. Uh, that's where the Fitzroy equation really helps because all of that absorption is kind of skewed on the Z axis the floor and ceiling, and that's gonna be a lot different than what the Sabian equation is gonna, gonna come out to be. And a lot of it is a little bit of experimentation and like working with reverb time uh, uh, simulations and calculations and testing data. Uh, often we know, like I can just look at a room and say, man, uh, this this one's definitely gonna be Fitzroy. And then we do testing and yes, the slope of that that reverb time uh, graph is gonna uh, match Fitzroy better than Sabine. Uh, sure. And so you just kind of have to play around with it a little bit. Um, but the Fitzroy equation, I think I think we actually use it probably just as much as we do Sabine because there's a lot of rooms out there where the absorption is skewed and, and all on one surface. Or anytime you have a, a, a bunch of different types of surface materials in a room, that's when Fitzroy end up working out really nicely. Sure. All right, so we have to kind of determine like when we should use these uh, um, equations because if you use the Sabine equation or the Irene equation in a room where Fitzroy should have been used, you're not going to get accurate numbers, you right. know, and, and and you're going to think that the room is is uh, got a different reverb time than it actually does. So Sabine equation again to remind you, it's it's. Uh, uh, highly reverberant spaces, a lot of reflective surfaces, very little absorptions present, and the absorption is uh, uh, um, evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. So it's not just on one surface over another. That's when the Sabian equation can be used. The Irene equation is for really dead rooms, and that it, most of them, uh, most of the surfaces have uh, pretty absorptive qualities. So it might be carpeted floor, drop tile ceiling, and then drywall walls with a bunch of acoustical panels on it. Like sure. that would be a, an Irene equation application. And then Fitzroy uh, would be where it's just a, a, a variance of a lot of different materials in the room and uh, it's not evenly distributed. Sure. So I'm going to quiz you. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, we're going to quiz you. All right, so here's an example. Uh, we got concrete walls, a drop tile ceiling, and a tile floor. 
Which equation do you think we'd use there? It'll be Fitzroy. You're right. You pass. <laughs> you pass, Ryan. All right. So that the reason for that is is that that drop tile ceiling in these churches, a lot of times that that ceiling uh, might be eight thousand, ten thousand square feet of, of absorption in the room, but it's only on the ceiling, and uh, it it skews things to where if you have a situation like that and you use saving, you won't get the right numbers. So sure. You think you can go for number two? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Number two, we've got uh, the walls are drywall, the ceiling is steel, and the floor is hardwood. So it'd be Sabine. Okay. So you're correct again. Two for two. <laughs> uh, so Sabine, the reason for that is, is that it's all, you know, reflective yep. surfaces and, and uh, um, not a lot of absorption present. So, all right. This is kind of easy, though, is to go for the third one. What, if I, one what if I mix it up, though, and I do Sabine and Fitzroy again? That could happen. You never know. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So the walls are drywall with acoustical panels, ceiling is drop tile, and the floor is carpet. That'd be eye ring. Yes, right. You got it. <laughs> I wanted to have an example for each of them in there. But uh, yeah, the reason for that is is that it's a pretty dead sounding room. Like it's uh, um, mostly absorptive materials, and, and uh, so eye ring would be the way to go. All right. You pass. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> you get to keep my job. You get to keep your job. <laughs> 